What's good? We're in here. We're out here. We're uh, we're gonna shoot you a little, you know, targets, values, sort of sleepers on some of these. They're kind of all the same thing. You can chop them up really however you want. You could talk, call them draft targets. You could call them trade targets. You could call some of them sleepers. Yada yada yada. But basically, we've been doing a bunch of startup mocking with our patrons, and you know, all over the place. And just kind of going to give you the list of sort of my guys of who we've been targeting. And yeah, so, you know, it's going to be a lengthy list on through the receivers and and some of the running backs here. Um, But, you know, they're all throughout middle to the middle end to the end of the draft. Super cheap guys. So, you know, it's not going to be a whole lot of, uh, well, this guy's yards per target were this and is this were that and is snap percentage was just basically going to be like look these are the guys that i'm targeting there's some silly rationale around whatever and maybe we'll get into a couple conversations but just wanted to kind of get in here as we close up shop on the dynasty uh kind of off season and start gearing up towards redraft and you know you might still have a dynasty draft or two and we're going to keep coming with some dynasty content uh but we're going to be moving to redraft and just wanted to kind of come up with, we've, we've gathered all this. I kind of feel comfortable with a bunch of guys that I target and, and, and Jason targets. So uh, we're going to do wide receivers and then we'll have another video for running backs and then probably another short video of tight ends. Uh, Cause that pool is not as plentiful. So um, obviously you can like subscribe five star on iTunes, uh, Google play. I don't even know that's a thing. Uh, Stitcher. <laughs> iHeartRadio might Radio. have it. I don't know. Really just uh, Spotify, Spotify and, and, and uh, iTunes. That's what I was looking for, Spotify. Give me the five stars. Send me a uh, screenshot. DM us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Send us an email to theffdynasty at gmail.com. Uh, we'll enter you into a contest to win a free tee. Yeah, we'll do a drawing every every two weeks or so randomly, and you can get a free T-shirt sent to you if you send us proof uh, that you – you know, hit us up with those five stars because we Even see. Even if you already did it, send us proof. We Just see take a all, screenshot. You we know, we see all the. Th- go to a different platform and hit us up with it. We see all the thousands upon thousands of downloads, and we aren't that. We don't have thousands of thousands of five stars or rankings at all or ratings at all. So. Let us know or just be kind and we go, got hundreds, go to hundreds, but we need thousands. Go to revelrybrewingco.com and you can just buy the shirt if you just want to do that. If you're like, hey, I don't want the free one, I want to support these guys. Or you can go to patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty, $5 holler, um, and, and support your boys over there. We're, we're hitting you with some extra content over there, a little bit of tears and uh, continuing some conversations and talking about drafts that we're doing, all kinds of stuff uh, going down over there. So. Without further ado, let's get rolling here. Um, wanted, to, targets. wanted to start this thing off with kind of a, a little higher group than most of what we're talking about here. And just because there's uh, there, there could be maybe some pockets in your league that I still see some pockets of shade and there is definitely a counterculture and some of these guys have some love, but they definitely still have some of their detractors. Uh, so those guys for me would be Mooney, Sutton, Mike Dub, Bateman, Hollywood, and, and then Tooney's probably the lowest end of this spectrum here. Tooney. Tony. is Tony. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, you might say, well, you know, those guys are all, you know, I love those guys. Well, maybe somebody in your league doesn't love them and is sleeping on them a little bit. And maybe just start off with, you know, two twos or something, send it over to those guys to get conversations rolling and kind of take it from there and see if you can get something rolling. You know, uh, Matt Foreman's with us. He doesn't like Hollywood. He's, he's maybe coming around. Plenty of people don't like Kadarius Tony. Um, you know, maybe you don't start off with two twos for Tony. Maybe you stick your foot in a little slower with that. But for the rest of those guys, some people are like, oh, Bateman is the God. He's going to crush everything. And other people are like, ah, you know, Bateman, whatever. Um, you know, Mike Dub. I came around on Mike Dub this offseason. I wasn't drafting him. And now I'm, I'm super interested. Sutton, some people is a do not draft for them. So fuck it. You know, if they're listening to that, somebody who's selling them that, go with that. And Mooney seems to just still kind of be a little bit under the radar of being a high volume target guy. We've done a lot of trading for Mooney this off season, as well as trying to secure some Sutton um, and some Hollywood. So just wanted to start that off with this. And now we're going to kind of move to like, you know, more uh, probably lower than like an eighth round uh, super flex uh, kind of range to 10th to round range. 
Yeah, and, and we've definitely been trying to trade for those guys in our existing leagues, but those are also really strong targets in startups because, you know, if you have Tony, you might have remembered what he did for a few games last season, and it might be harder to pry him off trade-wise uh, than, than it is to go get him in a startup where 11 other dudes don't really know how good he might have been. Uh, I would add yeah. Allen Robinson and Chase Claypool into that list of guys I'm – targeting and startups because they sure, fall Clay's, and they could definitely chase claypool a good a good add to that list of maybe there's some pockets of not not sure this alan robinson maybe not but definitely a target and a startup for me if you've been following along with us we've we've gone over a lot of right. startup talking and targets and uh, alan robinson is definitely a veteran target for me if my team's going in that direction yep um so that's all you know we've done rankings and stuff and there's all a sliding scale of all this but this is just a general of Right, sort of. and, and we just did a uh, running back ranking to your discussion. It was our last video, right. and you know we're not taking a lot of the those fourth, fifth tier guys because we're we'd rather have these type of players that we're targeting wide receiver wise because we're trying to get that RB a little bit earlier. And, and then if there's you've just heard the that value. video. Head on over to YouTube or uh, Patreon, and there's some more discussion of of the next couple of tiers of guys. So we've kept that discussion going for receivers and. Uh, running back so far yep um, so let's get going into some more of these guys who are kind of some targets for me um and we'll kind of you know we'll start off with the guys who are maybe a little bit higher like one or two of those guys for me and it'd be a christian kirk which you know i know nobody really loves but there's plenty of uh opportunity over there uh there's a new coach in town who's should be good for the quarterback and good for the team in general uh the o-line should be should be okay and and there really isn't a hierarchy established of who's getting what targets and they paid Kirk a lot of money. Uh, they had to overpay for him to bring him in there because nobody wants to go to Jacksonville and you know, Kirk pretty decent player. He's nothing great, but like uh, where you're getting him and where, where you, what you maybe could get him in, in a trade or in a startup, um, you know, there could be a whole lot of targets and some good value there. I think, I think Trevor takes a big step forward here um i think know. the whole team is in general takes a step forward like they were in some games competed could have, could have had a better record but you know just a just a total disarray of everything and, and then they lost chark early and, and like they were throwing it a lot they were thirsty just thirsty for somebody to catch the ball they were force feeding lavisca chenault targets even when he would drop them intentionally almost it felt like <laughs> and so they're thirsty for for somebody just to come in and catch the ball, move so the change, and Kurt Alt's not going to be on this list for Jason later. He's free, so yeah. if you want to, you know, I took him in a, in a best ball to pair him up with Kirk and Marvin Jones, who's also on this list. Like yeah. you want to take free Chenault because he when he catches it yeah. and he has a ball in his hands, Jesus, you know, yeah. it's awesome. But can't rely on that man, and that's why they overpaid to bring in Christian Kirk because they want to throw him the ball. Mike Marvin Jones can't do it all. He's like 32 now and is really reliable. And Mar and he had a connection with, with Trevor, but they need Christian Kirk. And I think that's a great target. Yeah. So then if you're, if you're a little older veteran win now, or there you're drafted your team in a startup this a certain way, I think Thielen is a nice target for you. You might not get more than a year or two, maybe out of him a little get long in the tooth, but you know, sometimes so in these cheap, super flex man. drafts, he, he hangs out until the 12, 11th, 12th, 13th round in some of ours. He's 12, nine and the one I just happened to just click on right now in ours in a super flex uh, yeah, draft. So late 10th in the sleeper ADP startup, uh, 130th overall wide receiver 50, like yeah, so. all day, regardless of how my team has gone, you can use him. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm probably going to steer clear if I've got a super young team and I don't feel good about it, but or, or I don't have a win now team as far as a, an existing squad thing. He's right. just so for that, some points, that's more for win now in either scenario for me. And it, it, like I said, he does hang around. So there is definitely pockets of, you know, it's not like he all of a sudden he goes a little higher. Like he's, he's, he either goes baseline of like a 10th or 12th 13th so there could be some value there if you need a receiver for some depth you know to add to add to your bench there um you know now we're going to kind of get into a little bit deeper stabs deeper takes deeper cuts um and these are in no particular order for me um but they never are um we got uh kenny galladay and i know some of y'all are saying no way he's dust and it's like look i'll take a shot on kenny He's had he's had some some good performances, good stretches, good runs. 
didn't seem to be into it can get a little banged up but uh we're we're hoping for a nice resurgence of the giants coming back you know turning it into a beautiful butterfly from from a, a larva to a, a you know caterpillar state here and then gonna blossom a little bit and if they're going to i think kenny's gonna be a big part of that um so kenny galladay uh jarvis landry can be you know a team saver and a draft and kind of left for dead and you know michael thomas we're not sure what what exactly is going to happen. I'm sure he will be back at some time, and then they, then they have a rookie. Um, like there could be a sneaky good receiver core here, or Landry could just be a vacuum of targets. And I love the idea of Landry for some PPR floor. And again, we are mostly talking PPR, which is you know why I like Kirk. Um, Got to be playing PPR. Uh, so Landry would be. Uh, a big is a big target for me in drafts and out of drafts if I'm trying to add some depth. Look, is he is he, is he gonna, you know, propel you to upper echelon uh, wide receivers? No, probably not. But he he could be a nice little flex play for you every week. Or if you have to start three wide receivers and you're hurting in that area, like could be a, some sneaky good volume uh, going to Landry there. So so Landry makes the list for me. Um, other guys that I don't, I definitely don't, I haven't missed Nico Collins in very many uh, startup drafts that we've done. Um, so, and he's probably still pretty cheap. We had the sad news about Mechie, uh, you know, miss probably missing the whole season and, and TBD on the future. I mean, shit, just get right, buddy. Right. Like. So, you know, haven't left the draft without Nico. There was some stretches through last season that were pretty good. That, that, receiving core is now even a little more open. Uh, hopefully, nobody was really on him. Uh, with the Mechie there and hopefully nobody really gets on him because he's still fairly cheap and I, I like the the size the build and the talent that that's there uh, so a lot of Nico Collins targets for me uh, Josh Palmer another one he just got a little sleeper every time I see a sleeper bird with one of these guys names on it, I'm like son of a bitch shut the fuck up so I know there's a lot of people seeing those Palmer saying he's pretty much locked in as the three I didn't know that that was even a discussion that needed to be said uh, but he also had some stretches uh, throughout last year. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm going to grab straws at, at uh, you know, I believe he was a third round pick kind of out of nowhere last year in the actual draft. Then he hung around, snuck him on a lot of teams um, and tied to, tied to Herbert there for a while. Keenan's, you know, a little older. Maybe he can transition into the, you know, the target vacuum that, that Keenan is and, and he can learn like I learned, um, you know, so he's he's a he's a big target for me um any anybody else anybody you want to throw in here i got i got more but um yeah i mean i gotta throw i want to i want to throw jacoby myers in there i usually okay. am drafting him for some ppr yeah. depth sure uh, i think he, i have full point ppr it's got to be full point ppr yeah for him just um, feels like he and mac jones had a good connection also down to grab kendrick Bourne too especially in like a best ball scenario uh because I don't know what's going to happen with that offense, and I find myself like wanting some of those pieces, but I don't know what's going to happen. I don't even yeah, have an offensive weird, coordinator. Yeah, it's a weird dilemma of McDaniel's leaving, being so long there, and, and you know Mac being plays? a second guy, and they're they're loving loving on some Mac right now. And I don't I don't dislike Mac by any means. I just we're sitting, we left. It's been left in flux a little bit to me. Right. Uh, so you know I'm not out on Jacoby Myers. I have no real problem taking Jacoby Myers. I'm probably just going to take Devontae Parker because he's super cheap. We've seen stretches of him be really good. He can't really necessarily stay healthy, uh, but you know Myers has battled some injuries throughout his career, uh, some knee stuff, and some other things, I believe. Uh, but I, I like I like waiting on on that. Parker's and, and a grabbing, thir thirty picks later, right? I like waiting and grabbing Parker on the on the a lot of these drafts that we do that go eighteen to twenty rounds. If I don't draft Devontae Parker, no one does. Nobody does. Right. Uh, so that's kind of a barometer for me. I'm going to wait on that. But I don't. I, I think Jacoby Myers in a full point PPR setting, fine, fine with that for sure. Yeah, thirteenth round, I'm in. Uh, Terrace Marshall for free. I got to get some Terrace Marshall. And I know some people are screaming. Well, they're not going to the first year. They don't get better. All right, let's just fucking settle down with that shit. People say that. Yeah. Um, People think they're so smart, right? Like they're well statistically because I mean, remember the third year breakout? I mean, right. remember when it took these dudes a second? Well, I couldn't even get on the field. It's like, well, he had he had a nice preseason. I know that doesn't mean anything. I'm still betting on the player. He's basically free still. Um, Said he came into camp. He's got a great attitude. Yeah. Like we've been working all off season. Like a lot of good reports. Terrace. Right. Yeah. 
was a board it was probably in our first round. And you could say, last well, that's year. why you're taking him because it's take lock. And it's like, it's not fucking it's take, not lock. take lock. He's fucking free. Right. Now. Yeah. He's I don't understand free. these people who get so bent out of shape about being like, he's 216. I don't know why you're taking that. It's like wide receiver well, 85. You're going to argue free. with me about somebody that's free. Like, what are we right. doing? Right. So that, that for me is a nice, free, all these guys are free. Basically. Young shot. Robbie, Robbie Anderson. I don't know what the hell is going on. He was huge for us last year. Robbie was, would have been Two on this ago. list. Last year, he we he would have been on this list. We were hyping him, yeah. So saying, you know, the my guy, I'm I'm gonna right. get Robbie Anderson he a bunch in the 11th, 12th last round year in the season. He was terrible, right? Fucking. The Maybe worst. he comes back and crushes. Uh, but I'm mm -mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab me some super cheap Terrace. Yeah. Um, and in, in that vein, super cheap Ravens wide receivers for me. We talked about Bateman to start this thing, but like Devin Duvernay, Devin, they didn't, they haven't ADP 230 and really Tylen Wallace anybody. isn't even on the ADP list. Right. Tylen Duvernay, Prochet, pick your poison. You could probably get two of those guys in a deeper roster for super cheap. I love Devin Duvernay. been a big Duvernay guy. I like Tylen Wallace a good bit. Uh, so five best wide receivers alive. Tylon, Tylon, yeah. Tylon. So, you know, that's a cheap group that you can get a hold of. Um, and maybe it'll be maybe it'll be Bateman and, and two tight ends for them that, that move the sticks. But uh, I'm going to bet on somebody else in there. Your boy likely, which uh, grab it in there. We, we whoa, haven't whoa, mentioned whoa, any whoa. rookies. Well, this. Now we're getting onto the tight end list already. Right, I don't right. even know why we're going to do tight ends now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, but you talked about a second tight end for the Ravens. Right. I just want to throw that his name right. out there. Donovan Peoples-Jones. Okay, D DJ D Pe D D DPJ. DPJ. Just a shot in the dark there. There's, you know, a lot of athleticism, a lot of talent. Uh, they did obviously bring in David Bell. Uh, but, um, you he know, is a rookie, and Amari. And Amari does get hurt. So Donovan Peoples-Jones made a night, has a lot of good plays on his resume. You're going to have to be without... Deshaun for a little for an unknown period of time but still to this day we're recording this on the 26th I don't know how long it'll take me to get it out there no news on Deshaun like Pat, Dan Patrick was like I thought I'd have some news for you no news not happening the but judge DP, does not care about training camp starting but, but DPJ is is, a, is an athletic uh shot that's you know pretty cheap right now that you know everybody I think here likes likes really taking um you said Paris uh, for sure. I'll I can't can't quit Paris. Take another he's, night, he's baby. Still, Let's go. Still super duper cheap. So um, cheap, getting good. I don't even know if he gets drafted in a lot of these ones. Maybe the last round that we do. He's ADP two forty seven. I don't even know what round that is. Twentieth round, so barely right. probably doesn't get drafted. I'll take one more shot, one right. more trip around the sun. Fuck Absolutely. it. I know a lot of people are probably out. Whatever. Yep. Um, so another cheap kind of wide receiver core to get after. I was I was kind of being like, you know, let me see where I got Lazard in my tears, and it's like a, I've kind of dropped Lazard down a little bit. Um, he could be really good if you have him. Fine, he he might be good, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and in these startups and super cheap like Amari Rogers. Nobody's really he did get a blurb a little while ago, but like nobody's really talking about him. He no could tags. be a nice little play. And Sammy Watkins, I know nobody really cares. I've traded him off a team in a kicker uh, in a kicker for a trade uh, a few times, but definitely still a target. Like the same thing. If with, he can help facilitate a trade, fucking see ya. But free Sammy, right? In a startup or whatever, right? So this is, this just goes along with a, kind of another receiver group go Tigers. That's, that's cheap. Like just like I wouldn't, you know, I'd maybe go, go take the shot on Devontae Parker because he's so much cheaper, and those Ravens wide receivers because they're so much cheaper. Not that I wouldn't take Bateman because I love Bateman. I'm fine with that. But you got two potential wide receivers right here. Lazard's had his chances to be good. He's been in good in, in some spots here and there. But you know, Amari and Sammy are, are pretty much free at this point. They don't get drafted in these drafts that we do. Uh, no, uh, I almost think that ever. Amar, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I've had had enough of Sammy in my day. I've been so, uh, yeah, fine. But, but Amari Rogers, I'm ready to fill that shit up again right. for sure. Cause yeah. that's, a, that's still kind of like a shiny new object, like kind of a watch was, you know, had a pretty significant injury in college, came back his senior year and, and had a pretty good senior year, played through it, but for some reason couldn't really get on the field his rookie year, but got some blurbs. He's had a little bit of hype and, He's a good player. Like he, he could, he could take over Randall Cobb, and he was like a seam stretcher from the Randall slot. Cobb's still like, there. Yeah, but, but come on. Who knows? But so yeah, I like, I really like the Amari, and then Sammy just being cheap 
in there, kind of just being the Packers receiver. So I threw I threw him in. I know we've covered a lot of names here, but these are lower end, cheaper guys that are just kind of our guys. And obviously, so you can't take them to, all, but like right. this is a list. Well, I take, mean, honestly, you kind of you kind of can, and that that's why they're that's why they're that's why this list is so long. Because as I go through these end of these drafts, if I'm looking receivers, a lot of these guys are guys that I do target and pick up. Two more names for me would be DJ Chark. I love picking him up. He's had his time in the sun of being really good. At one point, he, he was up in the top three rounds of start startups four rounds of startups um and he's just he's long rangy got some good speed uh they don't they don't really have a necessarily a wr2 over there and he's only on a one year and in in detroit right but he's he might not be they're talking about really not getting him i've heard plenty of talking heads be like and and insider nfl guys be like the if they can get jameson rolling by thanksgiving you know, that yeah, would be that would be great trying for trying to win. I so mean, they got, are, but they don't got, care. You got Chark on a one year deal. He's he's trying to get signed again. And I like the idea of Chark's really cheap. Um, and there's there's good there's good talent in there. He's been there. I've done it. I've seen good stretches. I was out on him. This is just the same thing we talk about all the time. I was way out on him when he was getting all the high praise. Now he's down here in the dumpster for free. I'll, I'll scrub him off and and you know shine him up, give him some new clothes, a meal, and say welcome to the team, pal. Right. Um, and let, let me clarify: Dan Campbell is definitely trying to win, but he his job isn't contingent uh, upon this year, and they're not going to rush Jameson. The culture, for no reason. The culture know? of the Detroit Lions, I think, is a, is swinging, and I love. I'm, I'm going to be tuned into every Lions game. I love watching them play. I liked watching them play last year. This offensive line's good. They, they needed a defense. They spent some picks on defense. Dan Campbell's just a, a culture turner, uh, trying to change what's going on over there. Um, so I'm, I like them. They, they could win seven, eight games this year. I don't think they necessarily want to. It'd be kind of put them in a bind with Jared Goff, but ah, uh, they're not. They're not worried about that. They're they're yeah. over there. They they want to win. That that that's yeah. going to turn things around for them. Uh, getting showing promise, wanting to, the, the wanting guys to want to be there because the culture is so strong, because it's rich, because it's not a bunch of people Patricia showing up. Patricia did not bring just that. Rooting for one win to not be the winless zero. Team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, and then to round this thing off, I'm going Marv Jones, an old trusty favorite of this show. He's not dead yet. Mm-mm. He's left for dead. Mm-hmm. Like you said, there was some juice with him and Trev. Um, oh, man. I mean, he was almost startable. They need him to be a, a nice little lead. They needed him kind of be the leader of this group, which is kind of what we were talking about. But now it's a, even a whole new regime, and right. I think he's going to be. he almost checked out. He almost said, fuck this place. Yeah. I'm not dealing with Urban Meyer because he fucking sucks, and I couldn't even blame him for doing that. But he, he stuck it out and stayed and and now now with with someone that you want to be there with with Doug Peterson and, and the, it seems like the whole environment has changed like that's someone who's actually had success in the NFL leading a bunch of young ass dudes that that don't know how to win he's won a Super Bowl like yeah. this is exactly what they need and Marvin jives with that you know he's an old savvy vet and and I love having him in that room with those wide receivers and and I want to take him just just for depth man just because if I abs in a pinch. Throw him in there because he can still, he can still win Guardian Leviosa in the back corner of the end zone and score a touchdown, like a forty-yard touchdown. There's your day, and yeah, and, savvy. and and uh, Trevor throws it up to him. He trusts him. He sees one-on-one coverage over there. He's tossing that bitch up. Like made plenty of plays, spectacular plays, one-handed, ridiculous body contortion. Like he doesn't look thirty-two. Yeah, because I've been going back and watching all these Jags games just to figure out if my boy Trevor is as bad as people think he is. He's definitely not. Like he's not. He's he he. I think he's gonna be just fine, and I think I think it was a culmination of all these stupid shit. But yeah, free Marvin Jones, ADP two sixty six, wide receiver one hundred three, last pick of your draft. Throw him on the squad. Yeah, and we we left any rookies out of this discussion just because we're mostly talking vets here. If we tar- started talking rookies, uh, could go a little further. We've talked a lot about rookies. We we kind of in all these startups we told you who we like where a lot of these rookie this rookie class is a little cheaper in the startup so i like getting a lot of them uh so uh appreciate y'all go check out the running back show and the tight end show um and we'll uh we'll be back with more uh fantasy football insight for your pleasure yeah let me get that five star review on spotify itunes hit the subscription if you want to send me a screenshot of subscribing on youtube i'll take that as an entry fee too Uh, I'm going to give away a free t-shirt every couple weeks for the next foreseeable future. If we run out of them, he'll give you that one. (laughs) 
yo, I've been wearing this thing for like five years. It's still comfortable. hasn't faded. It's a good, high-quality T-shirt. I don't know why we're not selling more of these things because this thing is fucking awesome. So, appreciate y'all for joining us. Appreciate you for listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.